Synthesis of Copper Glycinate In today's experiment, you will be reacting copper acetate and the simplest amino acid, glycine, to synthesize copper glycinate monohydrate. This is the apparatus we will be using for this lab. All glassware can be found in your locker. Begin by weighing by difference 2 grams of copper acetate monohydrate on the top loading balance. Remember to zero the scale before adding any chemicals to the weighing bottle. Click the link in the description below for a video explaining weighing by difference. Once you have weighed about 2 grams of the solid, transfer the solid into a 125ml Erlenmeyer flask labeled A and re-weigh the empty bottle. It is okay if not all of the solid is transferred from the weighing bottle as you can calculate the exact amount of solid transferred into flask A by taking the difference of the two weights. Next, using a measuring cylinder, add 20 ml of distilled water to flask A. Wash down any solid adhering to the funnel with the distilled water before removing the funnel from the flask. Then place a glass rod in the flask. Repeat this process to accurately weigh by difference 1.4 grams of glycine into the Erlenmeyer flask labeled B and add 20 ml of distilled water into it. Obtain a third Erlenmeyer flask and add about 20 ml of distilled water to it. Place all three flasks on a hot plate and begin heating the solutions. Bring the solutions to a gentle simmer. Stir the solutions in flasks A and B occasionally to ensure that all the solids dissolve. Once they have dissolved, remove the flasks from the hot plate. While the solutions are still warm, quantitatively transfer the contents of flask A into flask B. Before removing the glass rod from flask B, rinse it into the flask to ensure that no reactants are lost. Use a minimum amount of warm distilled water to rinse out any remaining solution from flask A into flask B. Remember to rinse the glass rod from flask A and the funnel to ensure complete transfer. Then allow the reaction mixture to cool for a few minutes. While waiting, prepare an ice bath by filling a 600ml beaker about halfway with ice and some water. Once the solution cools to room temperature, place it in the ice bath. After some time, crystals will begin to form in the reaction mixture. If the product is not precipitating out, you can use two techniques designed to encourage precipitation. First, try scratching the inside of the flask with a glass rod in an up and down motion at the air-liquid interface. If scratching does not work, obtain a small amount of crystals of the product from your TA and add it to your solution. These seed crystals act as a template on which the dissolved product will begin to precipitate out of solution. Upon crystal formation, add 20 ml of acetone or ethanol with continuous stirring and then allow it to cool for several more minutes in the ice bath. Next, set up the vacuum filtration apparatus. Ensure that the tubing used is thick and attached to the yellow vacuum outlet. The flask should be securely clamped. Turn the vacuum on all the way using the yellow knob outside the fume hood. You should be able to feel the suction by gently placing your hand on the Buchner funnel. Use a few mils of cold acetone or ethanol to wet the filter paper before transferring your product onto it. This will help ensure a seal between the filter paper and the Buchner funnel and prevent your product from draining into the flask below from around the filter paper. Using a spatula, transfer the product into the funnel. Use a few mils of cold ethanol to rinse out all the precipitate from the Erlenmeyer flask into the Buchner funnel. Allow the product to dry thoroughly. In the meantime, pre-weigh a plastic bag and record the weight in your lab notebook. Once the product is completely dry, detach the tubing from the yellow outlet before turning off the vacuum. Carefully transfer the dried product into the pre-weighed bag. You can do this by putting the bag over a small beaker and using a spatula to transfer the crystals. Once finished, close the Ziploc bag from the top. re the bag with the product and calculate the mass of the product by taking the difference between the two readings. Remember to use the same top-loading balance for both readings. 
Fill out a product label and attach it to the bag before submitting it to your TA. At the end of the lab, clean up your glassware and return it to your locker.